Hello and welcome to another episode of the Just Talking About Films podcast where we get together and we just talk about films and we hope that you will join us in that conversation. My name is Ian Sargentson. And my name's Luke Taylor. And yes, we would love to hear from you, to have you join in the conversation with us. Because much as we enjoy talking to each other about films, we enjoy talking to everybody about films. So we'd love you to join in. Come on, send us questions in. Um, Some of which we're going to have a little bit of a look at today. That's that's right, isn't it, Ian? Yeah, so I wanted to do this thing because we often talk about things, Luke and I, where we've prepared in advance, where, believe it or not, we have prepared, where we... (laughs) decided what we're going to talk about and then we'll talk about a topic whereas I thought it might be good just to get our gut reaction on certain topics so um, I've been meeting with various people this week at work and I've been asking them if they could write us me a question down that a film related question um, and then you know fold it over so I can't see it and five people have done that for me so we've got some questions today that are film related that Luke and I are going to look at that we haven't seen before and then we're going to answer them with our gut reaction. Because sometimes, I don't know what you likely, but we've done it on here where we've gone, oh, it's too hard to think about, I need more time. But <laughs> sometimes it's just good to go with what your gut reaction is. And then later on you think, oh, uh, that's probably not <laughs> what answer now. So we'll see. I think sometimes my gut reaction to some films offends people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we'll see what we get. But if you've got any and you're listening to this and you, you want to send us any, um, by text or tweet or WhatsApp or whatever. And obviously then we will see them, but we'll write them down with your name and we'll put them in a jar and they may come out, you know, in six months' time or something. So so we'll see that. So, yeah, all other ones today we haven't seen at all. So <laughs> that might make it a bit more interesting or it might tell us that this doesn't work. So we'll see. <laughs> We're a little nervous on that one. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know what people... They're all sensible people, so we'll see what they've written. Um but I don't know. It could be anything, anything to do with film, I said. So we'll see. Brilliant. But before we get into that, we'd like to catch up with what we've seen during the week. Uh, so, Ian, what have you watched this week? Yeah, I've only watched um, three films this week. I think there's been a lot of football on some evenings. I've been watching football, um, certainly for the last three nights. Um, and then, yeah, uh, and meetings and stuff. So I've got to watch three films this week. Still haven't been to any local cinema yet, but I will do that soon. And the first film I watched was Top Gun. So I rewatched Top Gun um, last week. And I can't remember if I spoke about it, but I hadn't seen it for a long time. Mm. Um, and I forgot some of the bits that were in it. I forgot just how um, indulgent some of the scenes were. Um, <laughs> you know, the romance scenes. When you're a kid, it's just all about the aeroplanes and stuff. Um <laughs> Yeah, and I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed the the emotional aspect of it. Still think it's a good film. Still excited by, you know, the planes um, and and the different characters. I think it was one of the first films that I watched where I liked the dynamics between the characters. I wouldn't have been, been able to articulate that, but, you know, the, the tension between Maverick and Iceman and then the friendship between Maverick and Goose and, and then the others that were these call signs. It was quite impressive. So, yeah, I enjoyed watching that, um, but it was a very different film to the one I remember through my child eyes when I probably either blanked out or fast-forwarded through the love and kissy kissy scenes. <laughs> or you had the version from ITV taped. Up. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so um, it's a bit different than that, a bit... Um, I guess, yeah, more sweary than I remember, but yeah, but it was good. Still enjoyed it. Can I, can I ask you, because I know there's a big thing on the new one that, you know, it's all real air footage and, they're, you know, the, the actors are really up there in the planes. I don't know whether they're controlling them, but they're in them. And so there's a lot of that, you know, that kind of, was that the case in the first one? or I'm not sure. Um, I think, I think it probably not. I would guess that, um, but I don't know, I'll have to do some research, that it's one of the things where, as his career has gone on, Tom Cruise has had more and more say and more and more control over what he does. So I know in all of his films, he likes to ride a motorbike and you see that in most of his films. Now there's a scene with him riding a motorbike and that's in the original Top Gun. But I think the control and the license to make demands and suggestions and the production side of it, I think his, his influence in that has increased as his career has gone on and he's become more popular. I think so back then it was still one of his early films. So I don't know for sure, but, I don't think so. Did it? Did it feel? Uh, you you wonder if it if it felt real enough. Is it worth the extra of making it real? I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels it feels like you're in the aeroplane. Um, but I know that he's a bit of an adrenaline junkie, isn't he? Anyway, mm. Tom Cruise. Be interesting to see and compare the two experiences. 
He flies helicopters and planes anyway, doesn't he? I think in real life. Yeah. Yeah. So I think in American Made, he did some stuff on that as well, didn't he? Is it American Made? American Made. Yeah, I enjoyed that film. That was fun. Yeah. So I think he did some flying in that and different things as well. So. Cool. Cool. So I watched that. I'm looking forward to I'm going to try and rewatch it because I haven't seen it since I was a kid before the new one yeah. comes out, I think. Well, that's what I wanted to watch it. And then I watched When We First Met. So it's it's a rom com time loop time travel thing. And I watched it and I enjoyed it, but then Kate told me that we'd watched it before. So I'm like, Have you been in the time loop? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so it's, is it Adam, Adam Divine, is it? Oh, hang on. I know the one you, is it? There's somebody he never connected with and he goes back and. No, he connected with him, but she friend zoned him on the night. And That's he right. Yeah. Go back and it's barely predictable, but I'd, yeah. I kept waiting for the guy from Maroon 5 to come in, but that's Adam Levine. Levine. Anyway, it's <laughs> him. But it's, yeah, so it's, but yeah, he didn't, he, he met this girl on night out, had a great night, felt a real connection, and then she hugged him. And he was like, oh, this wasn't right. And then it's a, a, he goes back in time to, he finds a way to go back in time to make that night better. And he tries all these things over and over. And obviously, Hmm. I don't want to make it too spoiled, but it's not too much of a jump that it wasn't the right path anyway. Yeah. And you kind of see it a mile off, but it was good fun. It was one of the few rom-coms which gets the com part right. <laughs> I mean, because a lot of them are romantic and just a bit, it's a bit soft and the humour isn't, but this, there was, there was some funny parts in it, some laugh out loud parts. So yeah, it was just something easy to watch that was on and I thought, oh, we'll give that a go. Um, and then, yeah, so it was all right. It was, yeah, I think I, I vaguely remember. I have seen it, I don't remember much about it. I haven't been enjoying it enough, I think. Yeah, it felt like a, a an Amazon film, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, is it Netflix? I don't want to see, but and then I watched maybe a bit of a busman's holiday, but I watched The Case for Christ, which was based on the, oh, the, the Lee Strobel story, yeah, based on the Lee Strobel story. Which again, I think I might have seen before. I can't imagine I wouldn't have. Um, but um, if you haven't seen it, it's a bit like it's about an investigative journalist for the Chicago Tribune, I think, that his wife becomes a Christian and comes to faith, and he's trying to, in an investigative way, disprove the things that she believes because he wants his wife back. Um, and and he goes on that journey and to explore the trying to prove the the that Jesus was a myth or that his resurrection certainly was a myth. And then it's about how that all unfolds and the case for Christ, which I found engaging, obviously, in the line of what we're in and what we do and what we believe. There's a certain bias there and leaning towards it. But I, I just thought it was fascinating, fascinating approach. And it's based on a true story. So I bought the book off the back of it to have a look at it. But, yeah, I enjoyed it. Hmm, good, good. I have seen that again a long time ago, so I don't remember much about it but uh, i remember it being yeah well well put together yeah yeah it was well made i think yeah yeah great and so that's the three you've seen this week yeah what about you and um, this week um again only three this week it's been um we just <laughs> not the football that didn't really turn me away <laughs> we've uh, we discovered yellow jackets this week um which is a series that i think ran a couple of months ago um, but we just found it and we've just been binging on that, watching that. So I haven't watched many films this week. Um, Premium Rush. Okay. Um, it's uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's an old film. It's from 2012. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt um, yeah, yeah. plays a bike messenger uh, in New York and um, he gets accidentally mixed up uh, with a crooked cop who's chasing him down played by Michael Shannon, who is doing the most bizarre performance. <laughs> it, it, it's a little offbeat, but it's in, it, it's a, he's definitely going for something, and I think he achieves what he was going for. Um, it's a strange film. I, it, it's, it tries to make these bike messengers out to be, you know, these hip heroes of New York, and I don't think it quite convinces, but <laughs> um, but it's, a, it's, it's kind of fun. It's goofy, but it's fun. Um, Good. So I I enjoyed it. it. It yeah, it's corny as anything, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and um, but it, I, I couldn't help but quite like it. Um, yeah. and where could people watch Premium Rush? Premium Rush, I believe I watched it on Sky. Right. Okay. Oh, no, I don't know how I watched it. 
Hang on. Nope, can't remember. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to look that up in one second as I'm talking about the next film. <laughs> um, and then we went to the cinema to watch uh, the new Downton Abbey film, Downton Abbey, A New okay. Era. Um, yeah. And it, have you ever seen Downton Abbey? No, I said last week I never watched an episode and you said, oh, me neither, and then I got hooked. So Yeah, wow. it's one of those things. I, I enjoyed Downton Abbey. I got into it. Um, and <sighs> I enjoyed the first film when it came out. I thought it was, you know, it was fun. It, it, they found a good hook to, to bring it on, you know, that the uh, the king was coming. So there was that rivalry going on between the under-the-stairs under, under the stairs staff with the kings, you know. And it was it was fun and had that nice conflict going on in it. And it wrapped up a couple of people's storylines as well, which was nice. But this one, it felt a bit like, first of all, it was pleasant enough, had a good time. But about halfway through, I, I think I realised everybody's story's finished. They, they've done it. They've... Everybody's mm. had their arc, as it were. Do you know what I mean? Um everybody's yeah. had their happy ending almost. And there's only a couple of people, minor characters that haven't. So it felt a little bit un unnecessary. Um, yeah. It just felt like they made it because the last one was successful. It also felt a bit like there's two storylines going on where Hollywood's come to visit uh, to shoot something in the Abbey. And also there's a trip to France and it just felt a little bit like they had two ideas and couldn't pick one to split the difference. Um, mm. So it was, it's okay. It just felt to me like it was treading water. But, you know, mm. sometimes it's nice to tread water. <laughs> you know, if you're in the sea on a hot day, it's not a bad thing to do. Yeah, I think they're probably striking while the iron's still warm. Yeah. You know, in yeah. terms of finances and stuff, because it's been a while now, hasn't it? Um, it has. I think it bit. needs to be the end. There doesn't seem anywhere left to go now. Mm. I mean, literally, there's, it just feels like the be making another one will be a huge, huge push because, and and that's the problem is is there was so little conflict, there was no yeah. conflict. It was all just it was yeah, so that it didn't give the storyline much direction. I didn't think. Mm. But having said that, I had a nice enough time, you know. And that's all that matters. Uh, and then I watched, because it's just come on Sky, um, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And um, I, I don't even know how to describe that one. Um, Tom Hardy's clearly having a lot of fun. And he's a lot of fun to watch. You know, I mean, it, yeah, Tom Hardy's fun. But it's not very good. It's, it's really, I mean... It feels like the Sony, you know, non-Spider-Man films that they're doing, the ones that surround like Morbius and, and, and all of that, yeah. just feels a little bit like they're just going through the motions on them. Like the plot is basically you could just you could you could have guessed the entire plot without even knowing anything about it. It just felt very bland. Mm. Um so it was totally uninvolving. Um, but I did enjoy watching Tom Hardy be a little bit schizophrenic <laughs> so you know it had its moments it had its moments i think that's all i could say for it yeah i mean to be honest i'm not uh, i'm not really interested in these conflicted superheroes anti-hero things yeah you know if we're going to do with superheroes they either need to be complex characters that ultimately do good or they need to be clearly good i can't be doing with these ones oh i mean i used to struggle with a hulk as a kid Mm. Kind of warm to him a bit. Um, but, yeah, so I haven't watched any of the Venom. I know very little about him. I think Tom Hardy is a good actor, but I don't know why he's done these. But as you say, if he's having fun, he's having fun, and he's getting paid a lot of money to do it, then fair enough. He certainly <coughs> looks like he's having fun, but it wastes Woody Harrelson. You know, you have the guy who was terrifying in Natural Born Killers. Mm. And they're trying, I think, to do a bit of a natural born killers thing with him. You know, they give him that, uh, like a bit of a love story to go with it. But it just doesn't connect. And you just, it feels like a waste of him. It really does. Mm -hmm. he, 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 like he slept walk through it. Um, shame. Shame. All right. So that's what we've been watching this week. 
Um, we would love to hear about what you've been watching, if you've seen any of those films, if you've seen Downton Abbey or um, Premium Rush or Venom or say, any of the films I mentioned, get in touch. And let us know what you've been watching. Let us know what you recommend, what you definitely don't recommend, what you agree with us on, what you disagree with us. Um, and, yeah, we'd love, to, we'd love to hear that. Yeah, yeah. So we have our box of questions. Not box. What is it? It's like a jar. A jar. A, a jar. <laughs> so there's five of them in there at the moment. So let's see what these questions are. So, so it's your gut reaction, Luke. Yeah. So don't be thinking about it. Just answer first, and then I will answer after you've answered, and then we can discuss it, okay? Okay. Right. So the first one is from Pete, and Pete has asked, what is the best Tom Hanks film? Oh. Forrest Gump. Big. Right, so I went Forrest Gump, and you went big. Tell me why why big. I think probably just nostalgia. Possibly. I like big because I loved it as a kid. Mm -hmm. Watching it as an adult, it's a bit more disturbing. But um... <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah. I have to admit, I haven't seen it in a while. But it, it's got so many stuff I used to... I mean, again, this is with kids' eyes on. The, the idea of going to work for a toy company and playing me, you know, playing with toys all day was good. That sequence with the keyboard, love that. I, I, I enjoy, I, yeah, I, I mean, the 80s were a big one for body swap things, weren't they? And uh, I used to enjoy all mm. of those. But I think it's what put Tom Hanks on the radar for me as well. So every time I think of Tom Hanks, it's the first thing I think of. Yeah, and I went Forrest Gump just because, I mean, I like, he's uh, probably in my top, three favourite actors. Um, mm. well, Forrest Gump, I remember watching it the first time, didn't know anything about it, thought, what, what, what's this about? It's just someone's name and it was just, it's like three masterpiece films in one. I just loved it. <laughs> I loved the idea of it, I loved the, the concept. Um, yeah, it was great. So um, it's one of my favourite films. So that's the first one for me. So thanks, Pete, for that question. Oh, honourable mention, though, to Captain Phillips. Yeah, Captain Phillips is good. I Which think. might be one of his best performances, I think. Yeah, I've got the steel book of that. But there's so many. He was good in Philadelphia. He was good in uh, Sully. Yeah, so there's Sully. Oh, Sully. Oh, I forgot about Sully. That's a good film. <laughs> Next is... Am I going first again? Yeah, from Ben. What is the best Disney film? Well, that's a big question. Does he, does he mean Disney cartoon, do you think? I don't know. Because Disney owns everything now. All right, well, let's say cartoons. Okay, best Disney cartoon. Mm, Robin Hood. Right, I would say Toy Story. Does that count? Yeah, you can have Toy Story, yeah. I would have always said The Lion King, but over recent years, I've just, become, I just love Toy Story. Toy Story is good, yeah. 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 But Robin Hood, I used to love Robin Hood as a kid. I, I think I'll be going on a nostalgia kick on all of these now. <laughs> I used to love the songs in Robin Hood. I used the cockerel playing all the songs. Yeah, yeah loved that. Um, looking back at it, the animation on it's not the best, but it doesn't matter. It's just it's such fun. Yeah, I, I loved it as a kid. It was probably my fav one of my favorites as a child, just because. It was easy watching. It was a story I was familiar with and it was a hero you could get behind. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed Robin Hood a lot. So you went yeah. Toy Story. I think it's certainly one of the most impressive and, 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 and most influential films, really, isn't it? Yeah, for me, it would be Toy Story, Lion King, Jungle Book, I think. Mm, yeah. yeah right. I mean, expanded to all of Disney's films that they currently own. Uh, that's, that's a bigger job. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for that question, Ben. Now we've got a question from Stuart. Who is your favourite Star Wars character? Yoda. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Which I surprises I me. Yoda. I think yeah. I would have thought it was Han Solo, but... That surprised me. I wasn't... Yoda's the first one that popped in my brain. So that was my gut reaction. Although I've got to say, I think it's probably Darth Vader. No, I think mine is Obi Wan Kenobi. Thinking about it, so, but yeah, I, I would have as a kid definitely been Han Solo. Yeah, because he was cool. Or, Bob, or Boba Fett, yeah. So. Mm. yeah and Han Solo because he gets the girl. 
<laughs> you know, when I was a kid, but <laughs> only because she found, she found out that it was wrong to kiss <laughs> <laughs> and yes. Han was cool, you know. He was a bit of that rebel, rebellious type. But yeah, Obi Wan was the wise, you know. Quite like so. I look forward to that. And I think the way that you and McGregor took it on, I think helped solidify that in my head. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, have you seen the trailer for the the new trailer for Obi Wan? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, it looks it looks it looks really impressive. Looking forward to that. Mm. Um, yeah. I said, I said Yoda, you know, but and I do. Uh, Yoda is just iconic, from you know, in my in my head. But I can't get past the fact that I'm pretty sure that the whole empire is Yoda's fault. <laughs> he just okay. didn't see it. He 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 was too proud. He didn't see it coming. And I kind of feel like Yoda's to blame for the whole fall of the Republic. <laughs> oh, okay, Luke. <laughs> All because he was proud. And that's not of the that's of the dark side, you know. He should have learned. Well, there's something for you to get into there. What Luke said, <laughs> if he just asked for help when he couldn't, when he felt like his ability to use the force was diminished, it could right. have all been avoided. So the, your best Star Wars character is Yoda, but his it's his fault. The fall <laughs> of the Republic is his fault. <laughs> He's the most important character you could say. I suppose. Okay. <laughs> right. Next one. So thanks for that, Stuart. Next one is from Emma. Rate the Hunger Games series out of 10. Is that all three of them or just yeah, the whole yeah. series? Yeah, yeah. Well, the three of them, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I'd say seven. Maybe no, seven no. and a half. I enjoyed them. I thought they it's were good. It's a sliding scale, you see, because the first one I really enjoyed, but I enjoyed them less each time. Yeah, maybe where I was the other way, probably with, is it Divergent and yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, The Hunger Games, I'd say seven and a half. I really did enjoy it. It was a fresh idea. thought it was done well. It was acted well. It went to the screen well. So I'm saying seven and a half. I think six. Hmm. Five and a half, six. But I, I really like the first one. I thought it was well, but I do think they suffer as they go. And the, the last one where they split that last book into two, didn't they? Mm. Um, was was stretching it. And I hate that they started doing that on so many things. Um, mm. So it loses points there. Although Harry Potter... Yeah, well, but that, but. I, I was reading something the other day, and you might defend this, that saying that about June, that June isn't June at all, it's June part one. I'd say that's fair. Uh, when I first saw June, I came out going, well, I don't know if I like June because I've only seen half of it. Yeah. Um, and there was always a chance the second half wasn't going to get made if it hadn't have succeeded. Mm. And so that would have been a real swizz. Now that it's coming, I don't mind. It feels like with, with the Harry Potter ones and the Hunger Games ones and the Twilight, that it was artificially extending the series. Mm. I think with June, it was, this is too much for one film. Yeah. I think. I think it was justified with June. Because I was exhausted by the end of it. I couldn't have done another few hours. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for your question, Emma. So I said seven and a half. Luke said five and a half, six. Yeah. And our final question from Craig. Oof. What is the film that's had the biggest impact on you? Oh, dear me. Got reaction, Luke. <sighs> Weirdly, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. For me, our biggest impact on me, probably Schindler's List. Hmm. I'll tell you why Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I don't think it's the best film. It's not certainly not the best Indiana Jones film. But I remember when that came out, it caught me on a wave, as it were. And when that came out, I was starting to get into what filmmaking was and starting to understand our film. And I went deep on that film and finally understood how things worked a little bit more. And it's what set me on the path on wanting to go that route career-wise when I was younger. Mm. So it came out at just the right time. You know, when I was in senior school and I was wondering what I wanted to do, that's when I wanted to make movies. Be mm. Not because of that film, but it 
it just hit me at the right time that I'd help repel that a little bit. It's not what I ultimately ended up doing. No. <laughs> it's, it set me on that path. I mean, close. Um, so for me, immediately I thought Jaws because Jaws has changed my behaviour for years, you mm. know, which made me scared of the sea to this day. <laughs> still scared of the sea, any sea, the North Sea. Um, still a fear around it because of that. Mm. But the biggest impact that... So it could be that, but the biggest impact that I welcomed or I was aware of or that wasn't just a negative will be Schindler's List, just because it changed the way that I thought. Mm. It changed... It opened my eyes to empathy in a whole new way, I think, to human suffering, to the human condition, to making a difference, just all of these themes that I wasn't ready for. Do you know what I mean? As a teenager, kind of moody, selfish, focused, very narrow view, and then this film came along, it was just like, what are all these things I'm feeling? Why am I so moved? And, and it affected me for weeks and months. I mean, mm. still to this day, but that I, I struggle to articulate it, really. It is a powerful film. Yeah. Years. It was just like, this is real. As I said, and I said it many times before, we'd learned about it in school and you get a glimpse and you see the pictures in your books and you may go on, some people went on trips and I did later on, but then it was like, but this, it's like watching it in film, stuff that you normally watch and enjoyable, but you're seeing that something that is created, but gives you a glimpse into what it would have been like and human suffering on such a massive scale and mm. how evil humans can be. Mm. Um, yeah, and it just it just changed the way I thought and about making a difference as well about, you know, Schindler as well. And yeah, and then how we can stand up for what's right. And yeah, it was, it, so just, yeah, that was, thanks for that question, Emma. That was pretty heavy, but yeah, um, so that mm. was probably it for me. You know, it was all three films that we mentioned, they were all Spielberg films. <laughs> yeah, they were, yeah. <laughs> so that says a lot about, about Spielberg, and <laughs> it does. The, the impact of it his does. films. He got reactions to strange things. Your answer was so much better than mine there. <laughs> you know, you jump onto well, one No, thing it's not and... better, is it? Because it's like <laughs> mine was all probably more sensible. But as I said, my initial thought was Jaws, and what came out of my mouth was Schindler's List. Mm. Mm. So Jaws, because it scared me so much. Yeah. Um, that it changed my behaviour. Whereas um I guess Schindler's List did in a way as well. Yeah, but it was more I was able to access it more, whereas Jaws, it was just scared of the sea and <laughs> didn't really watch it anymore. It wasn't in that thrilling way. It mm. was just for a while when I used to go swimming at the forum, I'd be worried about. I think I was more James Bond. I was like, you don't get sharks in swimming pools. And then it was James Bond, wasn't it? <laughs> that guy has a shark in a swimming pool. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I'm already scared of him. But yeah, but then, so yeah, gut reactions. Hey, eh? well, thank you for the people who contributed those questions. I enjoyed that. That, that, that. that was really interesting. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And if you've got any that you would like to contribute and, and send to us, then please do send them by Twitter or WhatsApp or text or post. Or however <laughs> you, you want. Um, but yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Thank you for the questions. I really appreciate those. And uh, it's those ones where, because there were some of those questions were like big, your favorite, whatever. Mm. But and then you've got the other ones with written. So I, I like the variety there. That was good. Yeah, well, what I'd, the brief I'd give to people before I'd started meetings with them, nothing to do with film, was something that, you know, we can respond to instantly so it's not like a slide and scale. Where I suppose rating out of 10 is fine, but you, you've got an answer to it. You, you've got a – it's a definite, isn't it? So you go mm. – so so I like that too. So they're the ideas of the questions that we kind of like. And if you've got a meeting booked in with me over the next couple of weeks, then I'm probably going to be asking you <laughs> asking you to do this. Um, so, so, yeah, but – it's interesting. Have you got any anything booked this week to watch, Luke? No, we're going to go do Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, hopefully over the weekend sometime. I haven't booked it yet, um, but we're hoping to do that. Um, for our movie club, we've got X-Men to watch. I've got X-Men to watch before Sunday. The first one, yeah. Um, and then I'm not sure what else is actually coming out this weekend, so we'll have to see. I'd like to go see something else as well, but... Uh, 
Definitely want to want to go do Doctor Strange. Yeah, I still want to get Northman. Um, oh, Northman, you've got to do not. So yeah. the more I think about it afterwards, you know, some <laughs> films just stick with you. Yeah. The more I keep going, oh, yeah, that was so good. Oh, remember that moment there? Oh, you know, uh, uh, some some there was some visual stuff in it, like, you know, some of the shot compositions. And uh, it was a beautiful film, beautiful film. Sorry, I'm getting excited again. You no, no, it's all right. So, uh, yeah, I'll look forward to that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and I'll see what else. I've got, uh, so I still haven't watched, I said it last week, G.I. Jane, um, that was sparked by the Will Smith controversy. Um, Have you done June it, yet? It's in my draw. No, because this is what I've said, that, so we moved in on the 24th of March into this house, and they can't come and put the fibre in until next week on the uh -huh. 13th of May. So I can't, to download anything on Sky, either takes four days if it works at all. <laughs> so I'm surprised that this Zoom is holding up this well. <laughs> um, I installed Windows 11 on my laptop. Yes, I totally forgot. It was like six hours or something. Um, so, so yeah, as soon as that's in, I'll be able to download all these things at a reasonable speed and, and watch them. So, nah, so streaming like just about works, although sometimes it pixelates, but trying to download anything, not a chance. <laughs> Fair enough. So that goes in on the 13th, so... Oh, well, you have plenty of good films to watch when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, very good. So that's what all we've got for you this week. We'll see you. Please get in touch if you want to come on and chat about aspects of film with us or you've got some questions for gut reaction or you take issue with something Luke said. <laughs> please, please get in touch with us um, and tell us or tell us your favourite films or uh, a top five of something that you want to discuss or you want us to discuss and we'd love to do that. And if it wasn't Yoda's fault, whose was it? Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> well, yeah, he played his part. Yeah, but yeah, we'll see. You know what? I thought about watching the Star Wars films this week. You know, it was for May the 4th, it was this week, yeah? So yeah, I thought, I'm, I'm going to start watching the Star Wars films. I'll, I'll, I'll blitz through all of those. And I started The Phantom Menace and thought, oh, no, I can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm like. No, I just want to watch the ones I want to watch. So. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. It okay, been... well, I enjoyed that, Luke. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. And uh, we shall see you next week. See you then.